I'd like to talk a little bit about keeping the cell membrane healthy, how important it is to have a healthy cell membrane. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. And my PhD in cell biology, man, we really got into the details of what's going on at the cell membrane. Uh, my, my particular interest was morphogenesis. How does a cell create shape? And, um, and so anyway, the, what's happening at the cell membrane is, is really critical for, for the cell. So let me, let me walk through some of that and how important that is, and then the consequences of not having a healthy cell membrane, because that is, uh, is, is, leads to, I'll just, just preload it, leads to cancer type uh, uh, behavior for a cell. So let's go through this a little bit. Okay, so first of all, the cell membrane, they used to, you know, researchers a long time ago used to believe because they couldn't see anything inside the cell or very little. There's not a lot that has much contrast uh, on the early microscopes. They didn't have the, you know, stains and stuff that, that you know, later on came along. But they really kind of thought that there was this bag of, of membrane uh, and inside was this jumble of, of material or gel-like substance. And then as the, as the information got more and more detailed over the century, um, you know, like two centuries or so, um, we got more and more information about what's going on inside the cell. So first of all, the cell is, is not this loosey goosey bag of, of stuff. Most cells have, have a, a definite, you know, sort of shape. And that shape is, is ends, if you will, at the cell membrane. In other words, there's, there's a wrapping. Okay? This wrapping is made out of fat material. You've heard me talk about this, this lipid phospholayer, bilayer. Uh, and so it's a fat-based uh, layer, and it can be damaged uh, by oxidation. Okay? So oxygen can damage this, uh, create oxidative stress uh, in, the, uh, in the, the cell membrane, and then that causes the cell membrane to become stiff, uh, it, it, it thing, it, just like when you take fat, I mean, if you, if you cut fat off of meat and you leave it out on the, on the, the, you know, counter and you haven't cleaned up afterward and, and you, or, you know, you look at that and what happens when that fat gets oxidized, right? Well, it changes color. It gets a little darker and it gets stiffer, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of poke at it and it, and it's not that, you know, real soft stuff that it used to be. Well, that's very much what happens with the cell membrane. It gets stiff. These, these little uh, uh, lipid layers don't, they're supposed to flow and move to some degree. They're, 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 there's, it's not, like I said, it's not this kind of water balloon, but they do actually have to flow uh, within itself, okay? That, that system has to flow. One of the things that, that people, researchers discovered, and I don't think it still comes out very often in terms of the information, but as they started to look at what's happening between cells, where does one cell end and the other cell begin? And, um, and so it was assumed that, you know, here we've got, you know, 15 trillion individual cells in our bodies. And so those cells just sit there and they, they do their own thing and they communicate through the cell membrane. Uh, but but that the membrane is where the cell stops and the next cell starts and so we're like okay well that's that's nice and tidy. Problem is it's that's not actually true. Uh, one of the things that became interesting source uh, interesting uh, focus of study was there's something that someone discovered in in a, in a very interesting way of preparing the cell is that these cell membranes actually create bridges with its neighbor. So when you look at a tissue, okay, if you took a, a multi-cell system and look at the tissue, one cell communicates with another cell, but not, not just through the membrane. They actually open up a channel, an opening, a bridge, between the two cells so that even the inside cytoplasm starts to go and flow between and communicate. So they have these open channels, these open communication between two cells. Well, the researchers that, that found this said, well, we need to study this more. And what they found was in a living tissue, in, you know, I'm talking about our muscle tissue, our skin tissue, our I mean, in a living tissue, all the cells are communicating with all the other ones much more clearly than we thought. It's not just a matter of here's the one, one cell ends and one cell begins and I have to talk across this membrane system, but, but the insides aren't talking to each other. No, it's actually that we're exchanging cytoplasm. Uh, the mRNA is, is exchanging. There's all kinds of stuff exchanging between cells. So this makes a much more cohesive one whole body than, than it is this, this bunch of cells that can be separated out. 
And the reason that we didn't discover this, and we, the reason we still don't don't talk about this much, is that because once it, it, that, if you damage these cell membranes, even uh, uh, even when you're trying to preserve the structure of the tissue, let's say we're trying to study this at a microscopic level, and we want to zoom down and look at what's going on inside. Well, how do you how do you look at a cell? under a microscope. Well, you have to prepare the sample. The sample has to be prepared in some way, and hopefully the attempt is to preserve the cell structure so that we're looking, what we see after we, we fix it and slice it and put it and stain it and put it on the slide, we want to make sure that what we see there is what's actually happening in the living cell. Well, that ain't, that's not true. That's what, you know, that's the problem is that we have to kill the cell, fix it, you know, free. So what they realized is that once we started doing rapid freeze fracture uh, of the membrane systems, we started to realize that if you flash freeze the cell really quickly, you catch a whole bunch of structure and interaction between the cell membranes that you didn't have once you dehydrate or fix or free or you know in normal freeze in other words these these communication systems are very fragile uh, they're very transient they don't stay there as soon as the cell gets injured everything retracts if the cell gets dehydrated it the, the membrane retracts and what we do is we lose that very intimate communication between cells. Well, what happens when you lose communication between cells? A cancer cell is one that starts growing without paying attention to its neighbors. It starts invading. It starts pushing up against its neighbor. Normally, when a cell divides and it pushes out, if there's not room uh, for, for that cell to grow, that pressure against the cell actually creates a feedback mechanism to say, hey, you can't grow anymore. You can't divide again. We don't have any room, okay? So there's back pressure. Well, and if that communication of the cell membrane and the system inside the cell that communicates to the cell membrane, all of that system, if there's a damage, if there's damage to that, well, then it doesn't listen to that. I don't care. I mean, I don't care if I'm up against my neighbor. I'm going to divide again. Boom. And divide again. Boom. And divide again. What is that? A whole bunch of fast dividing cells becomes a growing tumor. And that's what we call cancer. Now, why is this a problem? Cancer is a problem because these are our own body cells that are doing this. So the immune system has already been trained not to fight our own body unless we have an autoimmune disease, in which case that's a different issue. But the, so here we go with these cells that are, that are uh, not communicating, right? They're no longer talking to their neighbor. They're not listening to the rest of the class, so to speak. And, uh, and so there's where we get. So this protecting the integrity of the cell membrane and, and the communication system between cells is absolutely critical. And this becomes a huge issue when we start talking about the effects of toxins and things and, 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 and just stuff in our diet, stuff in the air, stuff we get exposed to. What are the effects of those on this cell-cell communication, both at an integrity of the material, right? So we talk about the material. I talked about that with our food, remember? Uh, the, the, we talked about that protein, our, 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 what are our cells made of? Protein, fat, sugar. We need to protect the integrity of those uh, basic elements in our food, and they can't be oxidized. Oxidation is the thing that's going to damage mostly uh, most of our bodies. In fact, uh, most toxins, when we call it a toxin, the reason it's a toxin is because it creates oxidative stress. It goes in and starts to steal uh, uh, electrons and and cause oxidation. So that's what we mean by oxidize. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's in the presence of oxygen. What we really mean is that it's take it's lost an electron. So what it, what it comes down to is when we talk about all these things, these toxins, these plastic residues, these chemical exposures, all of these things, what they do for the most part, the first thing that they damage in the cell is the membrane system. And that is very dangerous from a long-term perspective. So the work, uh, the working environmental working group has done research and they start talking about things. I'm not gonna get into all this, but they start talking about the cancer hallmark processes. These are processes that uh, in and of themselves, if you damage just one process or, or you influence that process in a negative way, it's not gonna automatically become a trigger or cancer response. But 
it over time, these things get weakened and damaged and create a, a, an environment, a toxic environment where the cells cannot function properly. They have too many things, too many burdens, too many cellular burdens uh, uh, that are going on. Now, those of us who have weak systems, uh, you know, and you, and you maybe have heard of this stuff about methylation and all the rest of that stuff, where we can't detoxify very well, that means our exposures are more important. In other words, we have to be more important and more urgent about protecting ourselves against those exposures that damage those cellular processes that then lead to ward, uh, you know, cancer. And for example, this was in this particular discussion, it was talking about cancer, but these cell functions are, you know, are across the board. There's not, it's not just about cancer. That's, that's just one way because cancer has a lot of attention. Uh, there's a lot of money being put into cancer. Uh, and so that's something that, you know, and, and people have this fear uh, of cancer, but you know, the other diseases are just as bad uh, and, uh, and, and, and have life, life impacts just as bad. So, um, so what we're getting to is coming back to understanding a little bit about what we talk about a toxin and we say we should not expose ourselves to a chemical toxin, this is something that's damaging the body at a cellular level. And this damage accumulates if we don't do our basic stuff of wellness to flood the body with nutrients. So you're starting to understand hopefully a little bit more about this wellness strategy. I got to stop poisoning myself. I got to stop adding this damage in. I have to flood the body with nutrients, and in the midst of that, here's our third our third leg of the stool, is to manage our stress because the stress will create an environment inside that prevents the healing processes from happening. Okay, so this is sort of, if you, if you could take a spiritual approach to it and say, where's the devil going to attack, okay? And, uh, and it's going to be really in this triangle right here. Uh, let's keep the, let's, let's, let's toxify the food supply. Uh, let's increase the stress and let's make sure we've got uh, industrial toxins on top of that and all those things slowly over time are going to beat that human body down and not allow things to be healthy and well. Well, we're our birthright is to be healthy and well, vibrant spiritual beings, full and emanating light and love. That is that is where what we're really about. And if we're not doing that, then we're not as well as we should be. Then our cells are not as well as we should be. Okay. So uh, I, I kind of equate all this to to me. This whole thing about wellness is a spiritual pursuit. Uh, to to honor God is to honor the creation that I have and to take care of it. And the more we understand, which is how the original science came about, biological sciences, was all about understanding creation so that we can get understand God. Um, and, and so that's the, the, the whole atheistic approach has kind of uh, uh, gone off track. But it's the, the idea that we understand our biology, and then we, if we do, if we understand our biology, we can make those choices. Maybe some of us will be a little bit more motivated to, to do that. So there's your sermon. I uh, should probably publish this on Sunday. <laughs> Hang in there. Wellness one day at a time. Happy wellness.